Woof woof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus, aka The Mad Dog, and thank you for tuning in to another video. So we've already done our most wanted DC omnibuses, and we've also already done our most wanted Marvel omnibuses. So that leaves only one thing that I can really do a list on to really try and grind out these views whilst my channel's getting up and running. So today I'm bringing to you my top 20 most wanted independent omnibuses. And we're talking old school independent, so I'm counting Vertigo, I'm counting Wildstorm, we've got Image, we've got IDW. It's taken me a bit of time to come up with this list, I've had to go through the archives of all these different companies because a lot of independent titles often get forgotten about once they're not being published anymore. So these are my personal top 20 most wanted omnibuses, hopefully some of them are on your list and let me know in the comment section below which is the one that you want to see most. So starting off this list we've got The Losers which was written by Andy Diggle and it was drawn by Jock. This actually got a movie and I believe it was just before 2010 that it came out and it happened to star Chris Evans of all people before he even went on to being Captain America. I had the first fat trade paperback and it was signed by Jock because it was an exclusive from Forbidden planet but I never actually got around to reading it and completing the series. Now that I've looked into it a bit more and you know I like Jock's art from Batman the Black Mirror and I've also read some of Diggle's work in Daredevil and also stuff like Captain Britain and MI13 and just for the fact that he's British as well I'd really like to see the losers get sort of like a second renaissance and get a second chance to certify itself as a good comic book series. Because at the time when it was coming out and I think it was iFanboy who recommended it they really enjoyed this series and it's all about spy espionage, heist and stuff like that which all sounds like stuff that I'd enjoy now that I'm a much mature reader than I was when I first started reading comics when I was about 14. If the movie was coming out today then it's pretty much guaranteed that we would see this on our shelves but unfortunately now that the buzz is no longer there I don't know if this one's likely. Coming in at number 19 we've got an image title with Skyward. It did recently complete and it's only got about 15 or so issues so it'd more likely go into a deluxe hardcover but unfortunately this series doesn't seem to have gotten the buzz that the premise for it sounds like it could generate. So from what I've heard Skyward is effectively about a world where gravity no longer exists and it's all about how does humanity kind of cope with that, how do we just kind of go on with the rest of our lives. And if there's one thing that this pandemic's taught me is that no matter how bad the world would get, everybody would just crack on with the jobs if they had to. And unfortunately we're probably never going to end up living in a Mad Max type of world. But this guy would just sounded like something really fun and it was something that I wanted to jump into but the minute it's only in trade paperbacks. And hopefully we will see a Skyward sort of omnibus shooting up into the pre-order charts soon. Number 18, I've got Kurt Busiek's Astro City. If memory serves I've only read one trade paperback of Astro City and it was something that was in the middle of the run and it was when I really wasn't into the proper like independent side of comics. So Astro City is one of those series that's just ran for years and I believe it's got like over a hundred or so issues now but the trade paperbacks are really difficult to get. This has won multiple Eisner Awards, it's got so much critical acclaim behind it but it still sounds like something that I'd actually enjoy. So Astro City is this place that exists, it's a fictional city that's like overcrowded with super beans. It sounds like it's more of an anthology rather than a continuing series but I don't really know where I can jump in or anything like that. I think as well with the way that it's collected this would be the best way to do it. It'd make it so much easier for everybody to get into it and hopefully bring back some buzz for that series. I like a lot of Kurt Busiek's earlier runs such as Avengers and Iron Man so why not give this a second chance and why not put in an oversized hardcover at the same time. There was recently an image circulating but somebody asked him on Twitter if there was going to be an Astro City omnibus and he said that there should be in the next year. I don't really know what the legality is in terms of the rights. I don't even really know which company owns Astro City anymore but hopefully that wasn't just like blowing smoke up our arses and there is actually plans to get this sorted. Coming in at number 17 we've got Vertigo's Unknown Soldier. Now this is a series that again was recommended by iFanboy at the time when it was originally coming out but since then it has just been forgotten. It's written by a dude called Josh Dysart who seems to have done a lot of stuff in other Vertigo titles like Swamp Thing but you'll notice that a lot of these lists are me wanting to get a series back that I missed out on at the time that I was really interested in for gotten about and now I think we've got an opportunity to bring them back. An Unknown Soldier is no exception, even though I haven't read this directly, it sounds like the type of book that I'd really get a kick out of. So it's set in northern Uganda and there's this kind of like civil war going on in the streets, everything's kind of awful, you've got all these drug warlords who own the streets and the main character is this guy who's got this voice going on in his head and as soon as the war sort of comes to his front door he realises that he has all the skills that he needs to kill and get himself out of the situation. I don't know too much more than that because with Vertigo Time I like knowing as little as I can as possible so that I can be surprised when I finally jump into it. Unknown Soldier is no exception and I'd be more than willing to blind buy for something that I've wanted to read for quite a few years. Number 16, we got Spawn by Todd McFarlane and just carry on with the rest of it as well. I know this spans into about 300 or so issues but Spawn's a character that I've always wanted to get into but never had the opportunity to. But for me as somebody who's never read Spawn before it's quite intimidating to know that there's 300 or so issues, the origins hardcovers are very difficult to find and there's no 
not really a good stable of like trade paperbacks that had helped me jump into this. Whereas with an omnibus, I'd be more than willing to jump into that. It's the origins of Image Comics itself. I was even one of the people that enjoyed the film because I watched it when I was really young, so it made quite an impression on me. And I actually watched Spawn before I even saw Batman, so don't really know what that says about me, but Spawn is something that I would definitely buy an omnibus for. Coming in at number 15, we've got Animal Man by Jamie Delano. This was the run that followed Grant Morrison, and it's kind of unfortunate. It feels like it's in the same vein as Swamp Thing by Nancy Collins. Because of that fact that it's following such an acclaimed run, it has seemed to have been forgotten. And with us getting that Collins omnibus of Swamp Thing, it gives me hope that maybe DC, even though we don't ever really know what they're doing, they might have faith to put these smaller runs into an omnibus format to see if we can get this resurgence. I recently saw someone's custom binds in one of the um, Facebook groups that I'm in. I can't remember your name, so on the off chance you're watching this, I apologize for that. But they made these custom binds of the following Animal Man series by Jamie Delano, and they just look gorgeous. And Animal Man's one of those characters that I think when they get the right writer, you know, in a similar way to Grant Morrison did, and you know, from what I've heard about Jeff Lemire, it seems like it's one of those things that they can really run with this story. I believe there was about 30 or 40 or so issues here, so you've got a good quantity to put it into an omnibus format there, and you can also shine a light on the early years of Vertigo that most people often forget about if it isn't Sandman. Number 14, we've got Swamp Thing by Alan Moore. Now, yes, I know those absolute editions are coming out, and if Amazon, for whatever reason, honors the price of Swamp Thing Volume 2 for £28, I'll of course jump into the absolutes. But for me, we've got Nancy Collins' Swamp Thing, which is a run that follows on from that. We're getting a new 52 Swamp Thing in Omnibus, so for me, I'd rather have like a great trilogy of Swamp Thing Omnibuses, but the one that's missing is the main one, which is from Alan Moore. I actually had the first trade paperback of Saga of the Swamp Thing, but like I said, I was way too young to really be understanding what it was about, so now I'd like to give it a second chance, but I'd like it to be in an omnibus format. Number 13, I've just put more Swamp Thing. So some ideas that I had, you could do a Brian K. Vaughan omnibus, but I'm not really sure how many issues he did exactly, or you could also do like a joint omnibus that's got stuff like, you know, Grant Morrison, and it's also got Mark Millar. Swamp Thing is a really enjoyable character, and I like his appearances and stuff like Justice League Dark. I did like what I read in the New 52, and when I see a character that I know I enjoy, with a writer's name that I know I like, such as Mark Millar, Grant Morrison, or Brian K. Vaughan, it just makes sense to me that I'd want it all in one big book so that I could just read it. I believe as well the trade paperbacks for some of these ones are difficult to get. I don't really know if that's deliberate and that they're planning on doing an omnibus, or maybe it's just DC being DC and they've forgotten. But either way, I just think it'd be great if we could really get a good comprehensive order of omnibuses entirely about Swamp Thing, and it seems like piece by piece we are slowly getting there. At number 12, we've got another Vertigo classic, and I'm going with Hellblazer, but done properly. Now, yeah, recently we did have the Hellblazer by Garth Ennis Omnibus coming out, and I know people say that that's like the only real full run of Hellblazer that you actually need, but I'm a completionist. I don't really care if it's only the middle that's good of a book, because I want the full thing. Now, John Constantine is British, so of course, yes, I'm going to support something like this. I even really like the Keanu Reeves film, and I think it's very underrated, despite the fact that, yeah, he wasn't really trying to do a British accent. However, this is like the main character for Vertigo when you think of like a continuing series. He's also now just a main face in the DC universe. I think he even showed up in Injustice at one point. What does this character do to have to get the respect that he deserves? Because there's been so many great writers that have worked on this book before. Just because Garth Ennis is probably the most critically acclaimed part of that run, it doesn't mean that the rest of it's crap and doesn't deserve to be collected in Omnibus. Now the reason why I didn't get the Garth Ennis Hellblazer book is because of the fact that I have a sneaking suspicion that DC DC might be planning to do this eventually. There's countless times where they've gone back and made one of the previous omnibuses obsolete because of the fact that they brought out a new line of them. And I just hope that this time I'm doing the smart move of not buying it in the hopes that that's going to actually happen. But either way, to me, Hellblazer is to Vertigo what Spawn is to Image. And I think it'd just be great, even if it's going to be about, I don't know, it got to about 290 issues. So even if it got to the stage where it's about eight or so really fat omnibuses, I just think that'd be great to have a main part of Vertigo history in your library. Number 11, we've got Scalped by Jason Aaron. I've read quite a large majority of this and I did actually really enjoy it. A lot of it reminded me very similarly to the world that was created in Sons of Anarchy. At the time though, I read it in a cluster and then it was still ongoing, so I never really got a chance to actually finish off this series. And it's also the reason why I don't really read single issues anymore, because you often tend to forget about series that you did actually enjoy. Now that Scalped's finished and Jason Aaron's still a massive name, I think it's silly of DC to not capitalize on this run and put it in an omnibus format. The oversight hardcovers are really difficult to get. The paperbacks of those oversized hardcovers only stopped at like two, I think, so they didn't even complete the series. I think this all 
also has the capacity to be one of those hidden gems within the Vertigo line. Now obviously because Vertigo is now DC Black Label, it's often going to be the case that some runs that you really liked might get forgotten about because of the fact that people see them as an imprint of a defunct line. I'd hate for that to happen to Sculpt and I just hope they come out with two big omnibuses so that I can finally finish this series. Now before we break into the top 10, I want you to leave in the comments what you think my number one most wanted independent omnibus will be. Now no cheating because I'll know, but if you're enjoying this video just give it a like and if you haven't done so already click that subscribe button and click that bell notification so that you never miss a video. Now number 10 is The Unwritten and I believe this was written by Mike Carey and when this was coming out it had a lot of buzz about it. I was even reading it in single issues. It was very much based in literature and it had this very soft looking art style to it but because of the fact that I was reading it in single issues at the time when I transitioned from reading single issues to being completely collected editions The Unwritten unfortunately got caught somewhere in the middle of that and I never got a chance to finish it. There was a glimmer of hope when they did the Unwritten Deluxe Edition Volume 1 but then of course in typical DC fashion they pretended like that didn't exist and now you can't really get the rest of it anywhere. Yeah there's trade paperback to this but I think because of the fact that it seems like one real big complete story I'd really like it if the Unwritten could get its chance to be an omnibus and then we can really see how this story panned out beginning middle and end. Number 9 and the cheating starts here because I've got either Stormwatch or Wildcats Volume 3 I think it was. The one that was done by Joe Casey. Now I've already got the authority on the bus and the Warren Ellis portion of it that I read when I was growing up I really enjoyed but I always knew that the authority was a sequel series to Stormwatch. They did do a few mini hardcovers of this but they were standard size rather than oversized and because of that I never really got a chance to pick it up and now it feels like I'm never going to get a chance to own Stormwatch. I know the authority is more loved than Stormwatch so I understand why that omnibus came out first but for me I'd just like it if I could read this entire story beginning to end and because of that I need the first part of it. Now the reason why Joe Casey's Wildcats is making an appearance on this list is also because of the fact that the art was done by Sean Phillips. Yeah there's actually a Sean Phillips book that exists that wasn't written by Ed Brubaker which is weird so I think it gets the omnibus treatment just for that. But this was another one that as I was growing up and I was learning about comics and I was watching iFanboy they really raved about this run of Wildcats. And it's completely different from the origins and you know the Jim Lee and stuff like that and it just sounds like something that really interested me and for years I've had it in the back of my head that this is a series that I should have read but I never really got a chance to because of the fact that it's not really that easy to find. Hopefully it's as good as iFanboy used to say it was because of the fact that it's been in my head for about 10 years or so now but if this got the omnibus treatment I'd be very happy and I'd pick it up day one. Number eight we've got Vertigo's The Exterminators. This seems like a series that not a lot of people know about and I'm actually reading it digitally at the minute so it's written by Simon Oliver, it's art by Tony Moore who you might remember is doing the first six issues of The Walking Dead. So far it's exactly what it says on the tin, it's about a team of exterminators, you've got this really grotesque art, you know, you've got all these pests and stuff like that, but also you realise that the people who are the exterminators are more disgusting than the bugs that they are actually killing. I put this on the list because I love Tony Moore's art, the beginning part of The Walking Dead just blew me away when I was about 15, but I'm already about a third of the way through this run, like I said I'm reading it digitally whilst I'm at work, and I just wish that I could get this in a complete set because of the fact that the trade paperbacks are really difficult to find. And also the paperbacks aren't that great, it's when Vertigo didn't really seem to know which paper to use and the paper just felt really cheap the entire way through. Number 7, I've got Walter Simonson's Ragnarok. I only recently found out about this because of the Hidden Gems video from Omar, but I just think that this sounds like something I'd enjoy. Even though I haven't completed it yet, I love what I've read so far of Walt Simonson's Thor run, so this sounds like it's Walt Simonson getting a chance to finish the story that Marvel wouldn't let him tell. So of course it's about Thor and it's about Norse mythology at the time when the world in Asgard has been destroyed as a result of Ragnarok. And the world just continues from there so if you're kind of sick of all those comic book events that happen and then by the next issue no one seems to remember that it's happened and no one cares anyway, this seems like the answer to that because it dives into the impact of what would happen as a result of Ragnarok. I don't know whether to buckle and just buy the hardcovers because it sounds like something I'd really enjoy and with it being IDW that's probably it. I don't really know how good they are at keeping stuff in print because I know these turtle books can often be a bit sketchy so I'm not really too sure what to do here but it would just be great if IDW took the plunge and gave this an omnibus. Number 6 and you should know his name because he is the man, he is the law, it is Judge Dredd. Arguably the most successful British character and I've got no kind of statistic to prove that. Judge Dredd is a character to me that is eternal. I've read quite a lot of Judge Dredd because I had a lot of those complete case files when I was growing up, sold them because I didn't really know how far they were going to go with it, but now they're a lot older, I would really love it if we could just get some good Judge Dredd in an oversized hardcover. Because I believe the complete case files are currently on about
about volume 35 or something like that, which is just way too intimidating for someone to buy. All of a sudden, if you put the word omnibus, it's not so intimidating and I'm going to throw my wallet at you. But there's just so many great stories throughout the years. You could even do it, even though I know I don't really enjoy this myself, they could do it creator specific omnibuses because near enough every British writer that you know has probably had some influence on writing Judge Dredd at some point. This one I don't see happening because it'd just be so much work to put all of this into omnibus format, but my god would it be good if this existed. Number five, and I'm really cheating here, it's Hitman by Garth Ennis. Now I know even at the time when it was coming out in single issues, Hitman was a DC property, but for me it just feels like an independent story and especially when you look at it from like the eyeglass of something like Swamp Thing where he can have characters from the DC universe appear and stuff like that, and I think that if they were to do a Hitman omnibus it would go under the label of DC Black Label. So for me technically I'm going to count that as being an independent work. And I think I've read volume 4 of this, it was whichever volume it was that had Batman in the background. And that was the reason why I read it at first because I thought this was accidentally the Punisher. So I've read it whilst I was quite naive to the characters so I'd like to read it now, now that I've got quite a knowledge of the DC universe. I've also got a love for Garth Ennis as a creator and it seems like the boys is doing really well at the minute so why doesn't DC capitalise on one of the properties of hits that they've got? Number 4 we've got another Alan Moore work and this is Tom Strong. And I remember reading the first trade paperback of this and I really enjoyed it. The art's really cool as well, it's Chris Sprouse I believe who's got just like a nice clean style. And Alan Moore's one of those writers that can always deconstruct any kind of genre or any kind of like familiarity with the series and create a new story. I've got the rest of the series digitally because eventually I do plan to finish this off but from what I read even though it was years ago I really enjoyed this but those hardcovers that came out are really difficult to get. And you know we've seen Promethea get a resurgence, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen's always been printed, Swamp Thing's getting an absolute edition so why not give Tom Strong that treatment as well so that it, we can build up a better complete hardcover collection of Alan Moore's books. Now getting the bronze medal is going to be kick-ass. Now I think I've asked this on the channel before but what on earth happened to Mark Millar? Where did he go? Like just before the beginning of the last decade he was everywhere because you had the Wanted movie, you had the Kick-ass movie, you had Captain America Civil War coming out and then he just disappeared. But a series of his that I really enjoyed was Kick-Ass. Now I didn't really read it past book two and I know there was a book three, there was a Hit Girl spin-off and then there was like the new Kick-Ass that was written by someone that wasn't even Mark Millar. And yes, I know it's John Romita Jr. art but I think he actually gives it a really good go in Kick-Ass. Like it's still not Jim Lee but he's done worse. And Kick-Ass at the time when it was being released was the biggest comic that was coming out. The issues were constantly being delayed to the point where I think the film actually came out before the first trade paperback of Kick-Ass even did. I remember pre-ordering it because it had that much buzz about it but by the time I actually got it I'd seen the film already. It'd be really good to just go back to this story now because of the fact that you don't have to worry about it being constantly delayed, it's already been finished for the most part and for me I think this would be one of those series that now would actually fall into being quite nostalgic. Coming second to the podium we've got Brian Wood's Northlanders. Now I've got the three trade paperbacks, the ones that are quite difficult to get and I'm, I'm not flexing there, I'm just saying. But this series is really good, like if you like your Viking type stories, if you just like old age type war stories and revenge and stuff like that, this book's really good and it's going to be for you. I think I actually prefer Northlanders over DMZ but I haven't read DMZ in years so I can't really say off the top of my head. It's just such a shame that Northlanders seems to be one of those series that I mentioned at the beginning that just seems to have been completely forgotten about. Like if you don't have those trade paperbacks, it's really difficult to get this series and I think putting it in an omnibus even though it's 50 issues it will just about fit under one hardcover I think that would be a great move to give this series the publicity it deserves but if you haven't read this and you do like Viking type stories do yourself a favor go back and read it it's so enjoyable but my number one pick for the most wanted independent omnibus is going to be Fables Jack of Fables Fairies do the whole thing. Again, this was a series that I read when I was way too young and I didn't really understand a lot of the literary references and stuff like that. But then around 2014 or whenever it was, Telltale released The Wolf Among Us. And I went back and I read the vast majority of fables and I absolutely loved this. And we had an announcement that there was going to be an absolute fables, but I was staying away from that because of the fact that it probably would have been about 14 or so absolute editions by the time it's been completed. I think Omnibus is definitely the way to go forward and 
I can see that they've announced a compendium. I don't know if that's the format that they're going to stick with. And admittedly, if they announce a compendium volume 2 before they announce an omnibus volume 1, I'm probably just going to jump to the compendiums and hope for the best. Because this is a series that now that it's finished, I'd love to read it in its entire chronology. Because Jack of Fables fits in here and there, there was also that series Fairies, there was also all the original graphic novels that came out, and it is a little bit confusing to know what exactly you're supposed to read and what the mapping for it should be. So if they did a complete Fables and Omnibus, even if it ended up being about eight or so big books that I need to find space for on my shelf, even though I don't have space for the books that I brought in this month, so I don't really know where they'd go. But either way, I think Fables is probably most deserving of the Omnibus treatment out of anything out of this list, and I would just really love to see it get that and be able to just have it in my collection. So, those are all my picks for the top 20 independent Omnibuses that I want. I know some of them are cheating, I know a lot of them are me saying, hey, I've never read this, but I'd really like to read it. But to me, that's what comics is about. It doesn't matter how you find the book, it doesn't matter how you read it, it's just about the enjoyability that you get from. It. There's some books that I've only read because of the fact that it came out in an omnibus and it was so easy to get because I didn't want to hunt down 10 or so paperbacks just to be able to read a story. But I'd like to know what's on your list and if any of my list appears on yours as well, let me know in the comments section and we can discuss it there. I apologise as well for the rate of videos coming out and also sort of the quality in this one. I felt so drowsy and just knackered all the time lately. I don't really know what's up with me, hopefully it's nothing too serious, but if there's been a bit of a drop in quality, it's not going to be permanent. I just feel genuinely so ill at the minute and I'm just hoping you guys feel much better than me and I'll hope that you'll feel much better than me even more so if you click that thumbs up if you enjoyed this video but if you didn't enjoy this video why did you get this far please subscribe if you haven't done so already and click that bell notification I'm still not sure what we're going to do when we hit a thousand subscribers if you've got any ideas leave that in the comment section as well check out some of my links so that you can keep up to date on videos and also see other comic content that I post there and if you'd like to support the channel I'm not going to ask for a patreon or any kind of donation or something like that also I ask is that you treat yourself to a book treat yourself to a movie or a game and just use the Amazon affiliate link down below and it's going to help me hopefully buy a new camera but let's just hope that a year from now some of these omnibuses have been announced but until then just make sure that you stay safe keep reading and keep barking all your mad dogs and i'll see you at the next video